When the first gameplay trailer for Pokemon Sun and Moon was released, we put the old analysis machine through the ringer, attempting to find any small detail that might give us clues to what the 7th generation would be like. And despite the fact that we found a lot, we didn't find it all. That's where you step in. We scoured through thousands of comments to pick out your theories, your observations, and your corrections of our original analysis. And so, it's time for part two. Of course, be sure to watch the original analysis as we'll be referring back to it constantly. So let's begin with the new Pokemon. First things first, many, many, many of you pointed out that the Japanese version of the trailer actually does show off one of the Sun Legendary's moves. When Shohei arrives at the store on the day of the game's release, a TV is showing off footage. The left screen shows that it has leapt into the air before sending out a huge flaming vortex. It's an impressively powerful attack, but the other TV has new footage as well. It's not as impressive, but it shows the moon legendary flapping in place while multicolored stars rise up around it. We're just not sure if it's some kind of status move or maybe it's idle animation. But there's more than just this that you've discovered about the legendaries. Kang Nugent made note of the fact that the pillars where the two are revealed are swapped between the two versions. In Pokemon Sun, the left pillar is of the moon symbol, while the right shows the sun symbol. In Pokemon Moon, the sun is on the left, while the moon is on the right. The question is, why? What is the point of swapping them? Why is the right side the one that has to have the game's symbol? It's impossible to answer any of these questions, though maybe it really is just for aesthetics. Interestingly, Computer Guy made the suggestion that perhaps the legendaries are more than just polar opposites in a cosmic sense. He puts forth the idea that perhaps the Sun Legendary represents hope, while the Moon Legendary represents despair, as evidenced by the emotional state of Shohei during the Japanese trailer. He looks at the Moon when he's sad, while the Sun is shining bright when he's hopeful and running toward the other kids. We're not positive if this will actually be the case, but it does make a lot of sense. But perhaps the strangest aspect of the Legendaries comes from Matthew Kelly on Twitter. He pointed us toward the Tumblr of Rainbow Firebird, who noticed that the symbol that appears on the Sun Pokemon's head is nearly identical to the symbol of the Hoshido in Fire Emblem Fates. And likewise, a symbol appears on the Moon Pokemon's forehead when using its signature attack. Amazingly enough, it seems to be a close match to the symbol of Nor in Fates. Is this just a reference? An unlikely coincidence? Or could there be some other connection between Fire Emblem Fates and Pokemon Sun and Moon? Is it really possible that the versions will be as different as Fates was, and maybe closer to Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, where there were two different evil teams? We really don't know, but this is a fascinating connection. Beyond the legendaries, Litten also turned out to be quite the topic of discussion, especially with Holly Jolly. In the previous analysis, we thought the markings on Litten's head, combined with the shape of its eyes, created the alchemic symbol for sulfur. While possible, Holly Jolly thinks it instead points to the chance that Litten will be the first Tiger Pokemon. The markings are similar to the simplified stripes on Tigers from different anime, and she even provided a few examples. Furthermore, she explains that Tigers in Chinese mythology are often associated with the sun and fire. Pushing this connection even further is how the Chinese character for King is similar to Litten's marking as well, and tigers have often been called the king of the animals in China. But Peterson Gunner has a theory on all three of the starters and what their theme could be. X and Y presented the idea that its starters were themed to role-playing classes, namely a warrior, a mage, and a thief. Peterson believes that a possible theme for this generation is the circus. Rowlet would be the ringleader, Litten as the tiger that jumps through the ring of fire, and Poplio is the most apparent connection as a seal that can balance a ball. The suggestion has been raised many times, and it certainly seems possible. The biggest revelation of the starters, though, was brought to our attention by many different people. A YouTube video by PD Winall, which we'll link in the description, has been circling around. In it, he believes to have discovered the secondary typing for Litten and Poplio. By going to the Japanese website and looking at its sources, it's possible to discover the picture files for ground and fighting types. Their labeling makes it clear that Litten's final evolution would be fire and ground, while Poplio would be water and fighting. While this is not a guarantee at all, it is excellent evidence that this could very well be the case, negating our idea that Litten would be fire and dark, while Poplio is water and ice. But only time will tell if he is correct. 
There is one more Pokémon, however, discovered in the Korokora magazine trailer where a few seconds of new footage was shown. In another video, we pointed out that a new Pokémon could be seen from behind and predicted based on its appearance that it was inspired by a Pomeranian. However, Gigawatt Fox and many others think that it actually may be based on a Shiba Inu as its tail curls onto its back in the same way. It's a very likely possibility since the dog-like Pokémon doesn't seem to have a thick fur coat like a Pomeranian. Finally, Celerina the Jackrabbit doesn't believe the presence of Meowth immediately rules out the possibility that Alola will only feature new Pokémon. They point out that you did just move to this region, it likely belongs to your mother, and it just came along with you. These are all excellent points and ones that we can't deny. And the existence of this new dog-like Pokémon continues the fact that beyond a Meowth in the house, we see no hints of any other previous Pokémon. However, we still believe that the region will be a mix of old and new. But that's just the Pokémon. You also have many ideas on the new characters that appear in the trailers. One of the more common things we failed to mention was how the character models are no longer chibi-like and are instead fully modeled at all times. It's the conclusion of the slow change in character models and a step up from the half-chibi look that X and Y had. But Naxero Dark goes on to point out a few other small details that we missed. For one, the battles no longer have a circle patch that spreads out around the Pokémon. Instead, they are in the full arena and not separated in any way. The same goes for the trainers who make an appearance in all of the battles, similar to how it was done in Pokémon Colosseum and Pokémon XD. This fact ties into a moment in the Japanese trailer that we missed, as pointed out by Connor Caffries. For a split second, we can clearly see the potential rival battling the trainer's Litten with a Rallet which confirms our theory that this rival, who we dubbed Hoku after the Hawaiian boy in the Japanese trailer, will pick the Pokémon that's weak to yours. It also shows that your opponents will appear alongside their Pokémon as well, or at least the important ones will. But it's Connor's last detail that is the most intriguing. He points out that the battle is taking place in front of the entrance to the nearby woods, but not on the platform. However, a screenshot taken from the Japanese website by Twitter user Splatoon Club shows this same exact battle, except this time the battle is taking place on the wooden platform. But there are more changes than just that. We see torches lit in the background and what seems to be a bonfire behind Hoku. And amazingly enough, there are spectators watching the battle on the left. That is a ton of detail for what typically doesn't show much. However, Hoku also ties into a live-action moment in the Japanese trailer. Wade Goodell and many others pointed out that there are eight silhouettes on the wall behind Shohei when he's being introduced to the class. The thing is, we noticed this ourselves, but we disregarded it as anything meaningful when we saw that one of the names was Hoku. But many people believe that these eight silhouettes and four names could refer to Olola's gym leaders. While it may be possible, we don't think that'll be the case. First of all, we can't see your rival becoming gym leader during your adventure. Blue didn't become a gym leader until Gold and Silver, so it must be a lengthy process. Second, there are actually nine silhouettes on the wall. Eight are indeed in the green section, but there's one just to the left of those. So that means they represent Hoku and the gym leaders, right? Again, we don't think so. The three other names, Caitlin, Pablo, and Ed, aren't very descriptive. Almost every gym leader's name ties into the type of Pokémon they use. None of these names do that. So while it's a good theory, we don't believe it to be true. However, there are some interesting details on Kukui that you have pointed out. First, Angela Kelly declares that Kukui definitely isn't married since the ring is on his left hand. If he was married, it would be on his right hand, so it is just merely decoration. Dylan Russo goes on to point out that everyone in Hawaii calls each other cousin, which likely means that Kukui is not related to the trainer. It really is just a local saying. But the biggest detail we missed on Kukui is how he really could be the region's professor. That's because Kukui isn't just a nut, but an actual tree. And not only that, but it's the state tree of Hawaii. So we come to an interesting point where we have two men, named after trees, found in Hawaii. With this information, we actually believe this to be another first in the world of Pokémon, and both of these men are professors. While it's impossible to give solid proof, we think Kukui will introduce the trainer to the region of Alola and give him his mission. For all intents and purposes, he'll be the main professor. 
However, given that Hala's namesake is on the seal of the prestigious Punahou School, we believe Hala is the former professor, now retired and teaching students at the school with Kukui being the star graduate, hence his youth. But Hala still handles the distribution of new Pokémon to young trainers, including his likely grandson, Hoku. Then we have the various locations that can be seen in the trailer. We talked before about a school matching Punahou School likely being somewhere on the island, Beth Goldstein believes that school may be the green-roofed building next to the Pokemon Center. We believed it to be an apartment building, but Beth points out that the brown part looks like it could be a clock of some sort, while the front section could be a kind of recess yard. This makes a lot of sense if we go even further since the Punahou School in Hawaii is on the outskirts of Honolulu and the nearby city is meant to represent Honolulu. And speaking of the city, Codename Mongo believes that the orange-roofed building in the middle of it is likely the gym, which we're inclined to agree with. At the same time, Keegan Day believes that he has identified which house is the player's home. While we thought it might be the house on the beach, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Keegan points out that during the scene where we see the inside of the trainer's house, we see the windows and the door. The windows on both are an exact match with the designs of the two small houses just south of the platform where you receive your first Pokémon, so it seems that yes, you live in the small village. In addition, Lobfish spotted a root sign during the night scene with the female trainer. Unfortunately, we can't see which root it is, but we do see that along with a sign for the number, there's another just below likely describing what the surrounding area is called. Another thing we notice is that while the shape of the root sign is different, the colors and their placement is a match for the U.S. interstate signs, which includes Hawaii. We do wonder if the roots will be slightly different to match Hawaii's interstate H1, H2, and so on, though we think the game will keep it simple. Finally, Nathan No and others point out that Hawaii actually has eight distinct islands, so it's very possible that each island will have its own gym. While we think this is partially correct, we still believe the Elite Four will be on the northernmost island. Hawaii's main island will likely house two or three gyms, while one of the other islands won't have one at all, though we think it'll have something of interest to make it worth traveling to. Before we wrap things up, it seems there are a few possible references to the other Pokémon games. While we've never played the Pokémon Ranger series, Mr. Poe Kirby points out that the platform where we choose our starter is very reminiscent of the central platform in the middle of Coconut Village from Guardian Signs. Looking at the two, they are extremely similar thanks to the surrounding village and more tropical location. While we're not entirely sure if it's intentional since there are plenty of differences, it is an interesting connection. And another connection, as pointed out by Piplup's Rock, is the strange souvenir item that you receive from a backpacker in one of the hotels around Kalos. It did nothing in that game, but was described as depicting a Pokémon that's venerated as a protector in another region far from Kalos. So it seems even back then, the developers had an idea of what region they wanted to depict next. We'd be interested to see if any of the new Pokémon resemble this statue. But that's everything that you found in the Pokémon Sun and Moon Starter Reveal trailer, with a little help from us. Of course, let us know if we still missed anything in the comments, and if you want even more, please check out our full analysis by clicking the link in the description. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Pokémon and other things gaming.